In this video, I'm going to show you how to have it so that the next button in Articulate Storyline appears after all of the action. So you might have multiple things happen on screen. So let's have this as an example. You want to use it to click on this, click on this, click this, click this, then the next button appears. I'm going to show you how to do that. And the reason you might want to do it is just so users can't simply click through everything without realizing they're meant to have done certain actions. I've already created a video on this. However, I've got a better way of doing it now. In fact, I wrote in the comments at some point how to do it better uh, after I recorded the video. Um, so I thought I'd just record a new video and show you how to do it. Uh, it's a really popular function as well. It's a really popular video. It's got thousands of views. Right, let me show you how to do it. Enough waffling on. Um, right, let's go to this slide here. I've got this slide all set up. I'm going to preview this slide. I'm just going to show you what it does. It's this slide here. Let's get rid of that menu. We've got the next button down here, but let's pretend it's not there. I'm going to show you how to get rid of it as well. You want it so the user clicks that, clicks that, clicks that, and then the next button appears. And I'm also going to show you how to do this with layers as well. So the first thing to do is hide the next button. So let me show you how to do it. Go to triggers at the top right. So click on this button here for triggers. Don't worry, if you've not used triggers before, I'm going to show you exactly what to do. So you clicked on the triggers button, you've got action. Now mine says jump to slide, but yours could say anything, right? So just click on whatever it says and then change it to change a state of. And then you want to change the state of an object. And the object here, it says placeholder, but we don't want placeholder. Again, it might say something completely different for you. Click on whatever's here. You've got a big list and pick next button at the very bottom. And you want to set state, so you leave that. And you want to set state to not normal. You want to set it to hidden. Now you want to use hidden and not disabled. Disabled will leave the next button there, but users won't be able to click on it and they'll get very confused. What you want is hidden because then the next button is just not there. Click on hidden. And you want to do it when the timeline starts on this slide. So I'll click OK and let me show you that happening. I'm going to preview this slide. So you can see that the next button is not there. You've got a back button, but no next button. And actually, if I do it very carefully, do replay the slide. There you go, replay the slide. Oh, it's not going to show me. If you play it in real life, the next button appears for about a quarter of a second, if that. Right, so I've hidden the next button. That's the important part that you've got to do. Now, what you want to do is say that when a user clicks on this one, this one, and this one here, that it's then going to cause the next button to appear. So the way to do it, first off, you've got to use variables. Again, if you've not used variables before, I know a lot of people have not, don't worry, I will show you exactly what to do. So you want to click on this button here, this is the variables button. I'll move that over and we want to create a variable. So to do so, click on this plus icon, create a new variable and you want to give it a name. Now it's worthwhile giving it a name that's relevant to this screen because you might have, you might have variables on lots of different screens, particularly if you're hiding the next button and having actions. So make sure it's relevant. Now, this screen is actually called Graphic Metaphor, so I'll call it Graphic M, and I'll give it the name of 1. Now, we've got three bits to click on this slide, so I'm going to have a 1, a 2, and a 3. That's why I've given it the name of Graphic M1. Also, you can't have spaces. That's me pressing the space bar on my keyboard. Can't have spaces. So, Graphic M1. So, pick a variable name or write a variable name that is relevant. The type, it's not text. It is true or false. And the default value is false. That is correct. So graphic M1, true or false, false. And we want to repeat this for each of these. So we've got one, two, three. So we want to create three of them. So I'm just going to do exactly the same. So I give it the same name, but instead of one, it'll be two. I'm just going to copy that to speed things up. So I've just highlighted it in Control C. The type is true or false it's false click OK same again plus button I'll paste it change it to M3 just let you know if you make it as a text one let's do that by mistake I'll press OK you can see the text ones appeared 
the quickest and best thing to do is just have it selected and press delete. There you go. So let's create a new one. So graphic M3. True or false? False. Okay. So I've got one, two, and three. Okay. Now I need to use those variables. So they're all set as false. I'm going to click on this hotspot here. So this is for header one. And I'm going to create a trigger. So create a new trigger. Now I've already got triggers on this. So these triggers are how to click on them so that the, uh, the text appears. But I want more triggers. And this trigger is all going to be dealing with the next button. So I'll show you that from the beginning. I'll click on that hotspot. I'll go to triggers, create a new trigger. And I want to adjust a variable. Okay, so instead of show layer, I want the action to be adjust a variable. And I want to set graphic M1, that's the variable we just created, to true when, not when the timeline starts, no, 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 no. It is when the user clicks on hotspot three, which is this one here. Click OK. So hotspot three, let's have a look. There we go. We've got that variable we just created. You want to do the same again for the other ones. So I'll show you once again, click on hotspot, go to triggers, and you want to change it from show layer to adjust a variable. You don't want graphic M1, you want graphic M2. So you want to set graphic M2 to the value of true when the user clicks on and make sure it's a great hotspot, which it is. It's this one here. You can see it just is selected below it. So it's hotspot one, click OK. And we want to do it a third time. But let me just show you something. I've got this one here. Always click away and click back onto the, uh, the variable that you've just created, the trigger you've just created. You can do control C and copy it. I'll go to this one here, which we've not done yet. You can see it's highlighted hotspot two. I'll just do control V. It pastes the trigger. Just need to make some adjustments to it. So instead of being the variable graphic M, you can click on that. So it's not graphic M2, it's graphic M3. So set graphic M3 to value of true when the user clicks on hotspot two. All right, so that should all be working perfectly now. The next thing we want to do is create one more trigger. So I'm going to click on this one here and the trigger, click on create new trigger. And I want to change the state of an object. The object is the next button. And I want to change it to normal. So remember, we made it hidden earlier to so change the state of the next button set to normal when the user clicks on hotspot three. And then we're going to use this condition. The condition is if. Now you probably never used conditions before, but I'll show you how to do it. So again, just follow me. On the condition that graphic M1 is true. And also graphic M2 is true. And graphic M3 is true. Now let me explain this. Earlier we had it, we just created a trigger that said when the user clicks on a hotspot, it will make a variable graphic M1 to be true. So what we're saying is if the user clicks on a hotspot, please change the next button to normal. If graphic M1 is true, i.e. they've clicked on this. If graphic M2 is true, i.e. they've clicked on this. And if graphic M3 is true, they've clicked on this one here. So you need it to have all of those variables as true. And it's only going to be true when the users finally clicked on all three of them. But what this allows you to do is not have it in sequence. The user doesn't have to go to one, to two, to three. They can do three, two, one. They can do three, one, two. They can do two, one, three, whatever they want. It's always going to bring up the next button once they've clicked on whatever the final one is. So we've done that. Click OK. Let's have a look. Here we have it in hotspot three. We've got set state of the next button to normal. Speed the process up though, click on this, control C, go to the this other hotspot, control V just to paste it. You don't need to change anything. Just make sure that that is the correct hotspot, which it is. And same again for number one or number two in this case. There we go. So we've got it so that when a user clicks on the hotspot, 
first thing it's going to do is it's going to bring through all of this text which is those bits here it's then going to change this variable to true it's then going to change the next button to normal if the user's already clicked on the other ones and don't forget the bit i showed you earlier on about setting the state of the next button to hidden when the timeline starts I will say just a little thing, the, the reason I normally make a mistake is because I've not changed this to user clicks, I've left it as timeline starts, which is incorrect. So always have it on these hotspots where it's user clicks. Let me show you this working though. So I'm gonna to to preview this slide, and whilst this slide is loading, don't forget to like the video if you're enjoying this and subscribe to my channel for more top tech tips, especially on Articulate Storyline. All right, the next button has disappeared. Yeah, no next buttons, only a back button. I'm going to click on this. I'll click on this one. Look, still no next button. Get ready. Bam. Next button appears because I've clicked on the third and final one. You don't believe me? Let's do them a different sequence. There we go. It's important to do the method that I've used because you can't assume that a user is going to do one, two, and three. Yeah. The odds are, the way I've got this laid out, I'd actually click on this on here first, always. Yeah, that's the way, because I've read that, and I'll come down to here. Let me show you that again, though, on a completely different slide. So I've got a different slide here. Let me just preview this one to you. So this is the slide. Let's get rid of the menu. The user's got to click on these. It takes you to the different bits. Yeah. So each of those are different layers. So on this one here, this was just one layer with text that was hidden. This one though, I've got different layers. You can see down the bottom right hand side. I'm gonna show you how to do it again though. It's gonna be exactly the same process. So I'm gonna create, well, first thing I do is hide the next button. So go to trigger, change the state of next button, set the state to hidden. Not when the user clicks, but when the timeline starts on this slide. Okay, so if I preview that, I'll show you the next button's hidden. There we go, the next button's there, or well, not there. It was there for about a quarter of a second, not even that, and it's disappeared. So users can't go forward without clicking on these bits. But now we need to set up all those rules. So once again, we go to variables. Remember, we're going to be four elements that we want to create, four variables. So top right, you will click on the variables. We've already got these ones. These were the graphic metaphor ones. Remember the slide that we've just done, this graphic metaphor slide? This time it's for this media interaction slide. So let's create a new one. Create a new variable. Name, so I'll call it media1, because it's the media interaction slide. The type is true or false always true or false, and we always want it to be false. I'm going to copy that just to speed up the process. Press OK. So we've got graphic metaphor one, two, three. We've now got media one. We want four medias, so I'll paste it, change that to media two, true or false. Paste it, media three, true or false. Paste it, media four, true or false. There you go, that's quick and easy. So we've got all these variables. You can also see if they're in use. So currently they're in use on the previous slide only. And this one here has not got any use. And if you click on these, you can see where they're being used. You have to read this text, but you can see where it's being used. Anyway, don't worry about all of that type of thing. But I will say it's very important to have different variables. If you use the same variables on every single slide, if a user were to, for instance, do all three of them on the, this slide here, this 1.5 graphic metaphor slide, and use the same variables, when you get to the next slide, the next button is already going to be showing because all of the variables have been actioned on this 1.5. So you must have different variables for each slide if you're going to be doing this next button. Okay, I'll click on OK now. And let's create all those rules. I'm going to do this a little bit quicker this time. So this group... Yeah, that group there is going to show a layer when the user clicks on group one. Let's also create a trigger. I'm going to adjust the variable of, not graphic metaphor, but this time it's media to true. And again, not when the timeline starts, but it's when the user clicks on group one. Okay. I'm going to copy that to speed up the process. I'll go to group two. I'll paste it. 
must remember to change it from set media one to set media two because it's for the second option there paste it again for the third one paste it again for the fourth one there you go you can make it really quick if you do this let's go back to the first one again now if you remember we're going to be creating or we're going to tell it if a user clicks on this to turn the next button to normal on the condition that all of the variables be met and this time it's four variables so we've clicked on the first object i'll click on create new trigger and i want to not adjust the variable i want to change the state of the next button which is off my screen i'll just move this up just so i can show you so i want to change the state of the next button there you go just down there to normal when the user clicks on group one if we've got variables here if media one media two media three and media four so that's all four of the variables associated with those are true 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 and you've guessed it true okay so always click away from it click on to the, uh, the trigger you've just created for that next button, copy it, paste it, paste it again, and paste it again. Now you don't need to change anything in here because all you're saying is set the state to the next button when a user clicks on group four. And because I clicked on group four before I pasted it, it automatically pulls through group four. Always check it if you're having a problem, but it should be fine. Also, you don't need to change these because it's the same rules every time. You just want all the variables to be made true. And now let's try that out. Let's go to preview. I'm going to preview this slide. So you can see the next button is hidden. Click on that one there. That one. That one. And then finally, that one there. You can see it works. You can do it in any sequence. I've just replayed it. You can go backwards. You can see there's none or no next button showing. Click on this, next button showing. Thank you very much for watching this video. You now should have a very good understanding of how to make the next button appear after you've done certain actions, i.e. users had to click on different objects in the Articulate Storyline course. If you found this video useful, please like the video, subscribe to my channel for more Articulate Storyline training, but also not only Articulate Storyline, I also cover Microsoft Office products, uh, different things relating to an Apple Mac, how to use Camtasia as well, which is video recording software, and lots of other things. Thanks for watching.